Hi, Gary Stearman. Welcome to another edition of Prophecy Watchers. And today we've got several things to share with you. And I'll start by holding up this book. This is uh, the uh, reprinted new edition of Time Travelers of the Bible. We have a lot of these in stock, and uh, I'm going to let Bob right now talk to you about the book and how you can get your very own copy. Well, to say we have a lot of them in stock is an understatement. I carried them all in from out in the parking lot, and uh, those books are heavy. 539 pages this book is, with material in it that I can guarantee you you have never seen or read in your entire life. There's nothing like this book. You know, Gary goes back into the Old Testament, into the prophecies of Ezekiel, into the prophecies uh, in the New Testament of John, who wrote the revelation of Jesus Christ, where they traveled into the future, and they saw things that God had prepared on his timeline that he allowed them to see and write about. That's what this book about is about. And the really fascinating part of it is, and Gary can expound on this more, but the cross of Christ sits in the middle of this book mm -hmm. because there was a point in time where Jesus came to earth and died on a cross in the perfect moment of time on God's timeline. He knew what he was doing. Yes. No one forced him. No one took his own life. As the Bible says, he laid it down. And so when you read this book, you're going to read about time travel. You're going to read about science fiction. You're going to read about the chariot of Ezekiel. You're going to see things in here about, about heaven, about hell, about places that the average Christian never hears about. So it's a fascinating read. How do they get this book? Well, for a donation of any amount to Prophecy Watchers, we'll send you your own copy absolutely free. And by the way, it'll come to you rather quickly because uh, Bob Ulrich uh, and the staff here at Prophecy Watchers have uh, devised a, a shipping method, uh, which they're very proud of, uh, of getting things to you as quickly as possible. And of course, moving forward, Bob, uh, with our bookstore, we're streamlining, we're using the latest techniques, and, and we'll be able to get things to people much faster than uh, was possible in the past. Well, our shipping department will probably kill me for saying this, but when you order a book today, a lot of times it leaves the ministry today. Wow. It's out the door, usually within 24 hours. My wife is cringing as I say this right now, but you know, that's the goal, that's the bar, we've set it high. We literally have six people at the ministry today shipping out over a thousand copies of Time Travelers of the Bible to people who've been so generous donating money to our startup ministry. Now, before we leave uh, talking about this book, I want to talk about the title, Time Travelers of the Bible. Uh, time travel is such a fascinating subject. Uh, you, you, you see it constantly under discussion. Science is working on uh, hyperdimensionality. Uh, uh, they're working on the possibility maybe of traveling in time and they, and they theorize about time. And there have been plays and dramas and novels written about traveling into the future, traveling back into the past. It's an exciting subject, but there's only one book in the entire world that speaks authoritatively on time travel and that is the Bible. In Amen. Isaiah 46, God said, uh, I've created the end from the beginning. In other words, in very plain language, God says, I created a timeline. And then God says, I laid things out along the timeline in such a way that you could read about them. Well, that's what the prophets spoke of. But Bob, uh, the Bible is the only book in the world, and I just have to say it again and again, that speaks authoritatively on time travel. Gary, I love the words of the late Dave Hunt. He said, if you know the future, you're either a super advanced space alien or you're God. And this is the truth. We have yeah. a book that foretells the future. And we see it literally happening in front of us today. And that brings us to our name, Prophecy Watchers. You know, Prophecy Watchers is dedicated to a number of things. First of all, the gospel uh, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, salvation through the blood of Jesus is one's only hope. And you know, Bob, this book, the Bible, is the only book in the world that tells you how to have your sins forgiven. And that's right up front with us at Prophecy Watchers. Uh, we want to extend the living faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of, of the blessed hope and of comfort. And we want everybody to know, and we're not ashamed of this, that we are pre-tribulational, pre-millennial, 
dispensational, following in the footsteps of, of men that going back to Darby and Schofield and Lewis Sperry Chafer and, and on to John Walvoord, Charles Ryrie, Dwight L. Pentecost, uh, or that, uh, pardon me, J. Dwight Pentecost. I don't know why I did that, but I wanted to get it right. Uh, and who hasn't reveled in the discoveries uh, of these men? They have laid out a tradition that we want to follow, and that brings me to another statement. Bob, today there is mass confusion about Bible prophecy. There are people out there with off-the-wall, strange prophetic interpretations that came from seemingly nowhere, as opposed to the, to the long-standing tradition going all the way back to the apostles, uh, the uh, traditions of hope and comfort, and in particular, the blessed hope, the pre-tribulational rapture of the church. I intend to stay in that mode as long as the Lord gives me breath to speak. Gary, I think we need to add your name to that long list of names you just quoted. Right. Because you are a voice of authority. Man, you guys have known Gary Stearman for many, many years. He's a man of tremendous integrity. He knows the Bible inside and out. He's a pastor here in Oklahoma City. Uh, people tune in, Gary, and I hear this all the time because they want to know the truth. They want biblical wisdom with a biblical foundation you will never hear anything on our television program that you cannot find in, in the Bible. That's the bottom line. Now, having said all this, we have something extremely exciting to share with you because our goal is to move uh, back onto broadcast television. And to do that, we need a studio. Uh, this is not a studio. <laughs> this is actually a residence. And we are using it as a makeshift studio until we can move into a real studio. And from that point, we want to get back onto uh, television into a mass audience so that we can bring the things we've been talking about to a larger number of people in these last days. And that's where the excitement comes in. Bob, we have been praying diligently uh, for a, a good while now that we would we would be able to find a suitable facility something that would have a television studio offices uh, perhaps uh, an, an area that could be used for shipping and receiving and and bob i believe that our prayers have been answered well that's a little bit of an understatement i've got to tell you a great story about two and a half, three months ago, I was driving over to Gary's house actually one day, took a little bit of a back road through an office park, and I saw a for sale sign on a building. Well, I looked at the building and my first reaction was, wow, what a great location, three minutes from Gary's house. Well, I got to Gary's house and I said, Gary, come take a ride with me. I want to show you something. We drove by this building and Gary started laughing. And he, he looked at me and he said, Bob, we can't move into that building. That's way too nice for our first building. And I looked at him and I nodded my head and I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it is way too nice. <laughs> and we dropped it. And that was the end of it. Yeah. Well, a couple more months went by and uh, I'm driving by the building again. And the for sale sign is still there. And I just thought to myself, you know what? Maybe this is something I need to look into a little bit further. And so I, I called the realtor. I stopped and I looked at the building. I walked in and, and I was flabbergasted by what I saw. What I really saw was a place built in 1997. That was a little bit of a white elephant. Uh, kind of a strange building. Been for sale for almost a year. And no one had bought the building. The price had dropped a tremendous amount of money. And I couldn't figure out why. Well, when I went into the building, I discovered why. It's an office building, but it's an office building with a full kitchen. It's an office building with a master suite, uh, a bedroom suite. It's an office building with a two-car garage. It's an office building with a lot next to it where you could build another building right next to it if you chose to. And I just thought to myself, this building may have been prepared for us 18 years ago. For yeah. the Prophecy Watchers. Uh, Bob, and I, I have to emphasize that the first time that I saw this place, my, my, my initial reaction was, who would want to move in here? This is really not a house. It's not an office. It's not a shipping center. But, then I, but what it is, is it's a television studio. Two television Two studios. Two television studios. And, and it, it does have, when you look at it, a shipping center, and it does have facilities where we could bring guests in and put them up for the night, 
before shooting uh, a program with them the next day. And in short, it was absolutely made to order for us. Well, we spend between 600 and $1,000 a month on hotel and food accommodations for our guests. So being able to put up L.A. Marzulli in his own private suite with a full kitchen, food in the refrigerator, I mean, this is, for most people, it's not desirable. But for us and, and our ministry, the savings alone, just from that, justified the building. Taking us back to, uh, to something that I, I told Bob, you know, a long time ago, <laughs> that the Lord was just going to one day drop a building on us. And That's a quote. That is a direct quote. Bob, one day God's just going to drop a building right on our heads. That's what you said. Uh, yeah, I did. And he did. And he did. Well, the good news about all this is we have acquired a building, and we are taking steps right now to get to settlement, and just as quickly as we can back to network television. Now, when you go on television, in fact, right now in a residence here, we hear planes flying overhead. We've got light streaming in through windows. Uh, it's not ideal for long term for network TV. This new building has a built in television set in it for our weekly program. It has another television set built in for your daily news updates, which I know people are extremely anxious to hear I, again. I can't wait. I've been reading the comments yeah. on Facebook, and, and people are anxious to hear what you have to say. I am anxious to get back uh, in front of our audience for the very simple reason that there is confusion out there right now about Bible prophecy. There are a lot of, uh, of private methods of interpretation that, that are just off the wall, let's face it. And uh, the, uh, the teaching, the expository teaching of Bible prophecy, uh, as I've been doing it for years and years and years, involves a long tradition, going all the way back to uh, uh, Darby and Schofield and coming up through Chafer and John Walver, Dwight uh, Pentecost, and, and on and on. Uh, Charles Ryrie, uh, men who really devoted their lives to systematic teaching of Bible prophecy. That's our tradition. Bob, I cannot wait to stand up and, and begin to project that. There's another reason. Folks, you all know the hour is late. Oh. I mean, there is a sense of urgency that we have to get back on television, to share the gospel, to share the prophecies of the Bible that are happening. We know and understand the times in which we live. Most of the world right. doesn't have a clue. Getting back on network television, getting back on direct TV, 32 million people all across the world are going to get to hear our program again very, very soon. And I have to tell you, we're very, very excited about that. Oh, and this is our prayer. We ask you to join us uh, in that prayer. Pray for us that we'll be able to quickly reach our goals. And once again, let me remind you that you can have your free copy of Time Travelers of the Bible uh, for your gift of any amount to Prophecy Watchers. And uh, you can just check the website, browse around, uh, kind of visit uh, the, the site, see what we're doing and planning, and I think you'll really enjoy it. You know, the most important part of our website is the free newsletter we offer. Ah. Gary's writings, L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas. I mean, some of these men have pitched in, and they're helping us write for this free email newsletter. And there's something I want Bob to tell you about. We've got a very special feature <laughs> coming up on the website today, a kind of an amusing story about how Prophecy Watchers got its name. Well, I'll be writing that uh, little story and posting it on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Prophecy Watchers. You'll see the story later today. It'll probably make you laugh out loud when you see actually how our ministry began. It, it really is kind of a kind of humorous. It is indeed. We uh, thank you uh, for remaining with us, f uh, for uh, joining with us in prayer, and for uh, kind of helping us along. We, we need your prayers, uh, we need your support, and uh, we just feel that we have a, a goal that we're driving toward as quickly as possible. You know, the time is short, as Bob mentioned a minute ago, and, and uh, we really are excited about uh, our prospects. Thanks so much for joining us again on Prophecy Watchers. And uh, by the way, keep watching everybody. <laughs>